I, I literally will watch you hit six balls and I'll go, right, you're doing this. The reason that creates that is because of this and then you then do that because it, every single action you create in the goal swing, the thing you've got to remember is it creates a reaction. Yeah. So if you have one action, you've got to work out what the reaction to that naturally, if you take golf out of it, would be. Then yeah. That's part of mechanics and stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's one thing that you're doing that's so simple, that's like the, the, and I reckon, I honestly think that there's like 90% of the people that I see do it, and the minute you change it, it all just goes like that. Oh, it's really, really weird. Like, Right, before we get started, I just want to say a quick thank you for all the really supportive comments on my last video. It honestly means a lot that so many of you are happy to see me back playing golf and making videos, and it has really motivated me to kind of kick on and give this a proper go. I just want to give you a big hug. Anyway, there's going to be a bit of time travel involved in this video, so just kind of strap yourselves in and keep up as best as you can, I guess. Yeah, I'm going back to the future with you. So last November, I had a golf lesson with Liam Robinson, the Challenge Tour player who you might have seen a couple of times on my channel. Um, the lesson was brilliant, but unfortunately, literally the day after the lesson was when Kat and I broke up, and then I literally didn't touch a golf club for about, I don't know, four months after that. Um, and even since I've been back playing, I haven't given any thought at all to my golf swing, so I've just been going out with like no expectations, just really relaxed to go and play and see what happens. And to be fair, I've actually played all right doing that. So um, I've played some like really nice but quite difficult golf courses like Formby, Walton Heath, the Belfry, and some good local ones. And I've had I think between 31 and 37 Stanford points in every round that I've played which considering the break that I had and the fact that I've only been to the range, I think twice in about the last six months, um, I'm quite pleased with that. But obviously that does mean that I've been shooting, what, between four and 10 over par um, in all of those rounds, which obviously isn't gonna get me to scratch. So I guess I need to kind of have a think and work out how I wanna approach it this year in terms of getting better. One thing I've definitely decided is I don't wanna get super technical with my golf swing. Like, I don't want to be wearing one of them kind of vests with dots all over it that sort of turns me into a 3D model so that we can actually prove once and for all that I'm not quite as good as Rory McIlroy or like measuring the angle of my toenails at impact or anything like that. I know that stuff is useful and it's like very clever and it works for some people, but I just find that getting that technical about the golf swing tends to just sort of fry my brain and I'm thinking about every different body part and it just makes golf feel really complicated and really difficult. So I thought I might as well go back and have a look at the footage that I recorded from that lesson with Liam, because I remember that he got me hitting it really solidly, really quickly, without it being anything like super complicated or anything that I didn't think I'd be able to reproduce on the golf course. And also, a few months before that lesson, I'd played with Liam um, in a golf day, and sort of during the round, he'd given me a couple of really simple swing thoughts and I went out and played the following day and I shot under par for the first and only time in my life. So I was thinking, you know, maybe he does know what he's talking about. So I've edited the whole video into a lesson, but that video is over an hour long. Um, so what I've done is chopped out two of the kind of main things that we worked on. Um, so one will be this video and then one will be in a video tomorrow. And then the day after that, I'll put up the whole lesson, um, which I think is really good. Like there's loads of brilliant insight from Liam, but I know that not everybody wants to watch a video that's over an hour long, so I thought doing it this way will hopefully give people sort of, you know, just a really good thing today that, you know, Liam thinks would work for 90 to 100% of golfers. Um, and the same tomorrow, like there's a drill that he does that he thinks would benefit absolutely everybody, no matter what level you're at. And then like I say, the day after that will be the whole lesson with every bit of insight from Liam, which obviously I would recommend watching, but yeah, like I say, I know not everybody wants to watch a video that long. So let's get back to the range. Doing this move will create a completely different backswing for you. What I'll do is I'll get a video from here and a video from behind. Yep. And then um, and then I'll kind of show you what I'm seeing. Yeah. So that's two representations of the bad, bad shot. It's good. So we're hit it. Yeah, it always will be. If you sleep, it will be. 
Very simple. So if you're underneath it, you're not rotating, you're adding a lot for impact. Yeah. Underneath it, flip it, and then try and make it look like you've turned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah? Right, so from face on, if I compared even just to my swing, for example, what you'll notice through here is that if you look at your lead knee, mm -hmm. and compare it to mine. Yeah. Yeah. So mine's like yeah. folded in a lot more. So there's three things that that's created. That that kicks in. What you're going to notice is is that then look at your head position, mm -hmm. and then look at how much you've had to get onto your trail side but the other th the other big thing is you know people talk about x factor mm. and stuff like that look there's no separation between your hips and upper body whatsoever yeah so the things that you're losing there are you've got you're behind it quite a lot yeah you're you've got you haven't got that coil that you know people talk about the spring effect mm. you've got no coil there whatsoever so you've got no split between your hips and your upper body so they'd be the same angle almost yeah. um so when I said to you at the start kind of about actions and reactions, so the initial reaction to that, I haven't even seen this by the way, but the, the initial reaction is going to be the, the first thing that's going to happen is your left knee is going to kick back out. Mm -hmm. So the left knee kicks out, that then means that the first movement is lower body's lateral. So what happens is then the only way you can get that club back down then is to pull behind because once your upper body goes lateral, your top half gets stuck. Yeah. Whereas when I'm here, look, I can rotate. Yeah. So you'll notice if you look at our head positions, mine's looking forwards. Yours is kind of underneath it mm. and stuck. Yeah. Um, so then the problem you're going to get there is, is then you have to kind of try and release and try and get. You see how you're leaning backwards in that kind of yeah. reverse C position. Whereas when I'm coming through, I'm more. You'll notice my back's more straight, straight down. Yeah. And then I rotate into a lower finish. You kind of have to go really high with your arms through there. Yeah. Mine are a lot kind of lower look. You yeah. can see mine come through and around. Mm -hmm. Yours go high and then try and and recover it. Um, if you then go down the line on that, the things that you see kind of in transition is that it gets very steep through this part. So the problem is, what you've got to remember is with a golf club, so the centre of mass, at some point it's got to fall behind. So everything always has always got to fall to the ground. Yeah. So if it's going to fall to the ground and you've got it that steep, if you rotated, the, the club would come so far out ahead that you'd then, basically what you end up having to do is, is stall your body yeah. so that then you can pull your hands left. Whereas if you had kind of from the start on the way down, if you had it more kind of rotary from your left shoulder, club starting to shallow out, mm. you would then kind of through this position here, you'd get the shaft more through your forearm, which then as you then just keep rotating will come in nice and shallow and would change the strike from toe to more central. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the detail. Yeah, because I've behind it. sort of tried to work on like rotating more before, but it's like I just can't do it because yeah. I'm well, already... Well, if the shaft, if you've got that steepness in the shaft, the problem is you're already stuck. Yeah. So you can't physically turn then. And it's going to feel strange because you're going to feel awfully restricted because what we're going to do is start creating a bit of split between here and here. So you're going to almost feel like it's almost like that. Yeah. So it's going to feel quite strange. But what I'll do is if you just kind of, I'll just get you to do a couple of practice things. Yep. So set up as if you're setting up to a ball forward. Right, and then straight away, what I'm going to do is just put that there. Right, now make a back swing. Right, good. See how much resistance you're feeling against that. Yeah. Right, so do it again for me. And I want you to almost imagine that you're not, that you're going to try and almost not kick the shaft in whatsoever. So Stop you've got to feel how that's going to, and I don't want you to kind of start getting all stacky and tilty to do it. Yeah. I literally just want you to feel that resistance in your lower body. Yeah. And it's almost going to feel like that, but you're not going to kind of start tilting to the target again. Because again, you tilt to the target with your upper body, it's going to create the same kind of problem. If you go this way, the reaction's going to be this way anyway. Whereas if you get here, you can then start moving forwards yeah. earlier and rotate onto it. So again, just feel that for me. Right, good, perfect. Alright, so if I now come away, literally after two swings, right, just make me that back swing, imagining that I've got the club there, yeah? Yeah. Right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Same again. Good. Right, so now what you'll notice, straight away, that, how much more stable that yeah. looks. Yeah, so you'll notice it looks a hell of a lot, and you can see the separation now, and now all of a sudden you're nice and stable. So from there, what we'll then get you doing then is being able to actually rotate. 
because it, you, the first action from there isn't going to be that and then all of a sudden I'm stuck and underneath okay, it yeah. so if I'm here my first action can now come more from here and get on top of it you see what I mean yeah so you can start actually working your top half a little bit more yeah. which is going to be a lot more beneficial <laughs> um, so just hit me one just kind of at about I don't know maybe 75 percent right kind of powers but I just or or so, even fully if you want to but I just want you to literally I don't care where the ball goes there's no expectation for it yeah. I don't care what your arms are doing all I literally want you to think about is just that knee. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So literally just as much as you physically can. Nice. And what you'll notice straight away with the ball fly does that. Yeah. Yeah? So what that what the reason that happens is straight away is that obviously if you're here and here and you're adding loft, obviously that's why it goes up, up your nose. Yeah. Whereas if you're here and then the reaction to that all of a sudden is to start getting more this way, the ball flies going to come down naturally. You don't have to do anything artificially to kind of be loft it. You just yeah. do it by covering it more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's why that happened. Yeah, because I felt even just from one strike that I actually like, down pressed it a bit more. Because yeah. yeah. like in a round, particularly when it's soft, I'll hit a couple of shots heavy. Yeah. Because obviously if I am that sort of bit behind Yeah, of course, it. underneath it, yeah. yeah. Well, you've got to remember, wherever I put my sternum, that's where I that's where I'm going to bottom out. So if I'm, if I go there, here, yeah. I haven't even moved this, but all of a sudden I've gone from being actually leaning left to leaning right without this even moving. Um, and the problem is once this gets behind you, your bottom out point's just going to be behind it. So yeah. the, your, your subconscious brain knows that. So it kind of like, well, I don't want to hit it there. So what happens is then you start pulling left, start getting underneath it and pulling left, and then you're in trouble. Um, you either get kind of the that's when you start getting the big misses and the missed strikes um, but that's where your missed strike will come from yeah. like it might just be the problem is when, whenever you're kind of underneath it this way the problem you've got is, is you've only got to sleep wrong feel a little bit unwell be a bit tired your timing's out and all of a sudden you don't quite get that in time yeah. and then you just have a hot horror day just like hitting it that far behind and you yeah, just can't yeah. work it out why yeah. whereas if I'm kind of a lot more based upon just your rotation and not really anything arm related even when I'm on well this is strong enough to be able to kind of get me through it so when you're making these backswings and stuff literally mate like position wise don't even need to worry about it because yeah. literally all I want it to feel like is almost kind of it's, it's nice and soft literally from there then it's kind of this takes a club away and all it is is kind of that kind of movement and then from there then I can start kind of grabbing the ground earlier and then I can start rotating and posting more up and then that's where the power's gonna come from. So just really resist the knee. There you go, beautiful. I said three yard draws, didn't I? <laughs> I did say I did say six balls, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right, that's it. So but that kind of ball flight is kind of like that. It's a lot nicer, isn't it? You can contra yeah. I like to call it kind of in front of me, is the way that I describe it. I'm like, it's a bit kind of more down here. The less that the ball's launching miles up in the air, there's kind of less that can affect it. It feels different. And obviously, I'm not thinking about anything yeah. else other than that. No. But the strike's different. Yeah. Pretty much out the middle of the <laughs> Yeah. Not hitting them off that shiny bit. No. <laughs> is that not what that's there for? <laughs> You've got to get your old clubs back out and use the different parts. So just feel one back swing and stop. Feel the back swing. Good. Perfect. Right, can you feel that? Right, and then go back in. And then again, you can feel that same back swing. Just feel it as much as you can. And then hit it. Nice. And you'll notice kind of the dispersion rate on those three shots is kind of maybe three yards. <laughs> so every shot's kind of exactly where you're going. But the reason for that is, again, you've got to remember, like, if I'm kind of going all the way over here yeah. and then all the way like this it's just so much of like a bottom out like it's just so much of a width of kind of where you could hit yeah, yeah, whereas yeah. if I'm literally kind of like and I'm not saying by any means like kind of stack and tilt or anything like this this isn't that yeah. what it is is just kind of I've got a center point and all I'm doing is maintaining that by staying strong here and then all I'm doing is kind of rotating and rotating there's just so much less going on yeah do you know what I mean there's a yeah, lot yeah. less room to kind of hit it um, and then that's why then all of a sudden the dispersion's gone from kind of you hit one right at the tyre and then you've hit others that have gone kind of left of the balls that we're hitting now and you've got maybe a, I don't know, what is a 40 yard dispersion yeah. ratio in the first few and your last three have literally all been on top of each other. Yeah. So that's why that happens. It's because it's just a lot more, 
around and everything's obviously you're controlled in here so you're aiming at the same place every time mm. and then it goes there <laughs> Um, but yeah, the knee thing is, yeah, it probably is 90% of people that I've seen. I think with myself, something that I've always struggled with is lateral movement. And I've never really understand why. Like I've worked really hard on kind of this grabbing the ground, changing direction early and whipping in. And that really made a huge difference. But when I watched my swing on camera, I noticed when I was steep and when I was bad, uh, you know I was kind of unwell after, you know when I was unwell in Denmark and Prague? What I did when I come home because I was so bored <laughs> was I got swings from the last three years and I basically put them all onto a database and started watching them. And at that time, like I've got such a good picture memory. I was like, right, I was playing good here, bad here. Yeah. I remember how good I hit it there and, yeah. and got those kind of videos out. And what I was noticing was when I got, st since I've changed this swing and my back swing has been pretty similar now for, it's been pretty much the same probably for two and a half, three years now. Mm -hmm. And what I was noticing was that when I was hitting it crap, the shaft wasn't through my forearm and it was steep. And uh, there looked like there was a hell of a lot more lateral movement in my lower body. So I was like, right, okay. So I happened to be the night before I traveled to a tournament at Old Woodbury Park for Jamaica. I'm stood there on the Saturday, man. I'm stood on the night fall and I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally towing everything, hooking it. And I'm just thinking, what on earth's going on here? So all I started doing was going back to my kind of drills that I'd got from my coach. And I was going, right, step through drills. So I was going, so I was kind of going step, back and as my hands got to about here stepping again and then kind of ripping through it so it's kind of step step uh, and I was just feeling that and all of a sudden I was like I started like flushing it and I was like Jesus that's like pretty good um, and then you kind of go back to previous thoughts and stuff like that and I was like oh um, last time this guy caddied for me all we did the whole way around was make sure I stepped through on every shot because literally I only didn't do it twice and hit two of the worst shots you've seen yeah. but every other shot was really good so I was like, okay, well this is making a bit of sense. Then in my head I was like, what am I feeling when I step through that I don't feel when I'm hitting the shots? And I noticed that obviously, if I've literally only got the club back to here and I'm already stepping, that angle of my left knee, you'll notice is almost going forwards and all the pressure's kind of already in my left foot. And then I kind of started getting into some like loaded information from people that have been testing these long hitters and Jamie and TGN literally spoke about it the other day. And it's almost proven that they're almost kind of low, they're almost 90% almost in their left foot as the club's literally going away. Yeah, yeah. So it's not because they're kind of going like this, it's, it's because the pressure in their feet is almost kind of, it's almost kind of down and around and then through here, you kind of grab the ground, post up and then kind of exert the force that way. Yeah. Um, but if your legs come like that, You've got no pressure with yeah. the ground and no interrupt. So how are you supposed to grab it to change direction earlier? Yeah. So literally, what I started doing the next event, I've gone down there, and um, I literally just kind of started feeling that I was almost just kind of not letting that kick in so much, and then keeping my arms nice and soft. And then from there, I went out and I shot five under day one and led it, and then went to um, then went to the next the next day, shot three under and unfortunately didn't win. But Played great, like literally didn't miss a shot, probably the best I ever hit it. And then literally since then, I've just done the same thing and hit the ball great. And I've, I've noticed more and more and more, particularly kind of with higher handicappers that struggle with slicing woods, that's made a massive difference. Um, and then kind of even the better players, so like I've got a lad who's off scratch that does come up here that I coach. Um, and he kind of had a similar thing. And since he's changed it again, check, completely changed his golf swing because all these people, like when I see those swings, they're all underneath it, yeah. and that's why there's so much variance in how they're hitting it. So it's like that's that's anyway just it's just through my experience and what I felt, and then because it's like in TGN, I only really post things that it's stuff that I'm going through. It's my personal stuff. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, yeah. but the fact that it's worked for me, it's worked under huge pressure. Yeah. Um, like I've kind of been up there in every event since I've been doing it pretty much at kind of Jamiga level and stuff and I also obviously played that event on the European tour and it hit the ball unbelievably there yeah. Um, and yeah it just kind of and all these people that have kind of that I see it in all of a sudden naturally over an hour's lesson you can go right this is where your head is this is where your leg is and stuff like that you change it and by the end of the hour it's like a completely different golf swing yeah. and they're all seeing ball fight like their ball flights are better the yeah. dispersion's a lot less and it has seemed to work so yeah this is the thing that kind of I see in a lot of people that personally I some people will say kind of you need to kick it in to kick it back out to start the downswing yeah. but my answer to that is is 
why would you want a lateral movement at the start of the dance? Yeah. Why would I want to go this way? Because straight away, this is underneath. Yeah. And if people are struggling with getting underneath, yeah. surely you want to do everything possible to help them start getting more on top of it again. Yeah. But hey, go on in. Yeah, I've seen it front <laughs> on like, how much yeah. I move off it. Yeah. And then obviously, I've got to find consistently yeah. the same place back. Exactly. The, the less going on, yeah. the more consistent you can become. Yeah. And obviously, the level you're trying to get to and the level you're at now. It's kind of, I think that last bit of a jump is it's, it's consistency. It's doing, you probably hit as good as good of a shot as somebody that's off scratch or you putt, hold as many putt as a gut. But the problem is, is you need to do it more often to get to where yeah. you want to get to. Um, so if you've got a baseline that's kind of like from all the way over here, but I know it impacts statistically, I have to be 75 to 80% on my left side. Mm. I've got to go from 50-50 to probably 75 over here to then get all the way back across. Whereas if I'm kind of 50-50 and I'm kind of, I'm here and I'm still feeling that pressure in this zone, yeah. I haven't got to get as far across to then. Yeah, because when yeah. I watch your swing or anybody like, who's really good, it looks a lot simpler than yeah. mine. Like there's less going on. Yeah. Um, and obviously you're generating more power than me, yeah. but it looks like there's way less, like it looks like your swing shorter, you're just on top of it, yeah. less movement, um, yeah. whereas my like is. this. 45 moving parts and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the biggest tip that I can give anybody is how many times do you hear when you're out playing with people and their mate goes to them, oh, you're swinging it long, you need to shorten your golf swing. So they, all they do is like swing back shorter, mm. but it's the same stuff that it is when it's longer. It's no different of a golf swing. So they're like, well, that hasn't worked. The only way you can naturally shorten a golf swing is to change direction earlier. So if I'm changing direction, and what I mean by that is, is as my arms are still going back, is I'm almost kind of already getting into my hitting zone when I'm halfway back, that then is how you shorten your goal swing, because your arm swing can't go as far back. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if I'm like, but obviously I go long, don't I? And then I've got to pull it back in to try and get it back down to where it should be, and then I can't rotate. Um, but that's, that's probably, that's a good tip. That's probably, because I used to constantly be like, I need to shorten my swing, I need to shorten it. Because I used to kind of be long and across the line and yeah, chicken yeah. winging and whatever yeah. else. And all I ever used to try and do was like shorten how far back it went. Yeah. It was the same crap as before. Yeah. It was just shorter. <laughs> I think mine's long in a way because I don't turn. It's like the only way for me to get to a position that feels like golf swing. Yeah. Just so my arms travel all the way up here. And yeah. Well, it's very kind of arm orientated. Yeah. Um, but again, it has to be. Yeah. Because the thing is, you've already gone like that, so you can't really turn that much. <laughs> Whereas if I'm getting the coil here, all I've got to do then is all I, then I can actually kind of get that separation and then it can uncoil back through the ball. That's my take on it anyway. Well, <laughs> working so far. <laughs> Good thing is kind of the impact on the club face as well. It definitely looks a little bit more um, central. And the more we kind of soften it up then as well. So just soft arms. Soft arms, and then literally from there, keep the knee feeling like it doesn't. Like you, you almost need to feel like it's going to go that way yeah. for it to probably yeah. still only kick in a little bit. Yeah. Like it's just on the driving range, extreme movements are what you need. Yeah. So then that's it. So it's there, and then just turn on through. And what you'll start to notice is it's kind of like the start lines will become a lot more consistent. Yeah. And the shape will be dependent upon kind of strike. So the better you strike it, it will draw a little bit more. Kind of like that one, maybe there, maybe if it's not stuck, struck quite as well, it might just hold its line a little bit more. But yeah. it's not, again, kind of with an eight iron, if you were hitting that into a green, you're not missing the green iron. But so again, same thing, you're going to feel like this as much as you physically can in the resistance, then you're just going to turn through. already starting to get a bit of speed aren't you? Yeah it just feels like yeah. I'm in a better position. Yeah. Um, I'm like having to do everything with my hands and arms and save every shot. Yeah. So again same thing, so nice bit of resistance then work through it. That's the one I was expecting. Like where you're actually starting to get a bit of speed. It's just a little bit at the bottom. Yeah that one was a bit yeah. yeah. But that's, but again, if that's your bad one, yeah. this is probably in the exact same place as a good one. Yeah. So, as you saw, Liam reckons that 90% of amateur golfers do that thing with their knee and that fixing it massively improves their strike and their dispersion and makes the golf swing feel a lot simpler. Now, I've got no reason at all to not believe him. He obviously knows a hell of a lot more about the golf swing than I do. But when people tell me things, 
I tend never to just sort of blindly accept them. Like I always want to go out and sort of ask questions, do my own research, look at the evidence before I accept it as an actual fact. So in this case, that is exactly what I've done. So here are the 10 best golfers in the world at the moment. How many of their lead knees are kicking in the way that mine was? Now, if you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know that I don't necessarily think that us amateurs need to make our golf swings look exactly like a tour pro. I mean, it might be nice, but most of us are probably gonna to struggle to do that. And yeah, if you've watched my video with Jimmy McSwingFix last year. Hi there, my name is Jimmy McSwingFix and I'm here to sort out some golf swings. Then you'll know that, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily about having this like textbook golf swing. Um, but like I said, I like to look at the evidence and the evidence was that as soon as I started just thinking about that left knee, I started compressing the ball properly, I was hitting it much better, the dispersion went from that to that, I was hitting it about 15 yards further with an 8 iron with what felt like less effort, so the evidence suggested that it was working. But the best thing about it was it just felt so simple, like it felt like something that I could definitely take out onto the golf course where it matters, even under pressure, and it's not like 15 different really complicated swing thoughts that I've got to try and piece together at high speed. You know, it's just a simple thought. Um, and yeah, it seemed to make me hit the ball a hell of a lot better. So there you go. Let me know what you think of this lead knee business and whether it's something that you think you might want to try that might help your golf swing. Also, Liam has been kind enough to offer a free lesson to somebody. So if you want to be in with the chance of winning that, all you need to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel and put a comment down below just saying Liam lesson. Um, and yeah, one person will get drawn out to win a lesson with Liam. In the meantime, if you want to follow Liam on social media, um, I'll put his links down below. And if you don't know, he's also got a private Facebook group called the Tour Golf Network. Um, basically it costs 10 pound a month to be a member and he puts loads of different sort of swing advice, course management, tips, bits and pieces on there. Um, and if you're a member, you can actually like book a lesson with him. So um, again, I'll put like the contact details down below. Basically, if you're interested, you just email him and he'll kind of like explain it all to you. Um, so yeah, that will all be down below. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. As I said, there'll be a video up tomorrow where Liam takes us through a drill that he does, which he says has completely transformed his game and that everybody could benefit from doing, but I'll let him explain that. And I'll see you, not in the future, well tomorrow. I guess tomorrow is the future. I'll see you in the near future. And these drills single-handedly like trans started to transform my golf game and all my swing is now developed around these kind of techniques. Mate, honestly, when I first come back from Australia, <coughs> uh, two years ago, so I came back, had no card on anything, <laughs> but had no money. <laughs> And then I basically went to uh, some qualifiers in Czech Republic, which is what pretty much started everything for me. And I probably spent, I don't know, maybe six weeks practicing before I went out to Czech Republic mm. and I didn't go on the range once. All, right. All I did was an hour and a half a day on this. So I was like, well, if I go and hit balls, I know what I'm gonna do. At least if I use this, I know what I'm gonna create. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that I basically spend, even still now, I probably spend I don't know, probably three, four hours a week on this. I know everything that I'm going to tell you. So I know this shit works. Mm. This stuff works. Do you know what I mean? Like for everybody, any player in the world could add that into their game and I guarantee you it would make it better. Yeah. Then you look at the knee stuff. Lee Westwood at the minute, every practice session, I stood next to him whilst he was doing it, funnily enough. 
and I was I laughed to my dad and my dad laughed at me because I was like I was watching what he was doing and I was like what I did two weeks ago do you know what I mean so it's like and he's probably the straightest ball striker you'll ever see yeah and that's what that's going to help you with. That's going to get your straightness. The thing that's going to get you your power, strike, and speed will be this.